Thank you for joining us today on Salon Sluice. My name is Leslie and my co-host is Melissa. I want to remind all of you who listen to us on a regular basis, or maybe this is your first time, to please follow, subscribe, like, share, whatever the case may be for the platform you are on. Now, we do post these episodes on YouTube with video for those of you who'd rather watch. We enjoy making these shows, but unless you interact with us, we're not sure if you do. So please jump on your social media and let us know. You can find us under Salon Sluice on almost any platform. Now, we hope you enjoy today's show. Thank you. I had one of my favorite clients come in the other day and wanted to talk to me about the movie The Exorcist. Now, this movie was something that frightened me for years growing up. You know, I had a sister that was a lot older than me. And so I was basically forced to watch some really scary movies, which then now doesn't bother me at all because I was desensitized as a very young child. Now the movie, The Exorcist, I remember watching through the holes of my Afghan that my grandmother had crocheted for us. I remember watching the movie through these holes. And I don't remember ever being able to finish the entire movie until I was an adult. Now, this movie was super frightening, of course, but I wanted to tell you some history that went along with this movie because there seems to be what people call a curse around that movie and the filming of it. But it happens that there's a story that started way before this. Now, there was a young boy named Roland Doe. That's not his real name. That is the name that they've given him to protect his identity. But he was 14 years old and he was an only child. He usually just played with the adults in the house, including his aunt, who was a spiritualist and who introduced him to the Ouija board. Aunt Harriet then passes away and there were some strange things that started happening in the house. Now, at first, the family thought it could be Aunt Harriet because she was a spiritualist. Maybe she is just coming back. But what some of the stuff that was happening happened to be very negative. And so the, the family then started to wonder um, if it was something else. There were things that would happen that the, the furniture was moving all on its own and different objects would levitate or fly across the room. So it obviously had freaked them out. They went to their Lutheran church and sought out Luther Miles Schultz. And they were asking him if he could come by. He seemed to have an interest in parapsychology. He actually arranged for the boy to spend the night at his house. Now, when this happened, he was able to witness some household objects moving. The furniture seemed to be shaking or moving on its own. And then when he was done, he advised the parents to go seek a Catholic church, which they did. The family then travels to St. Louis, where Roland's cousin helps them get connected with William Bodern. Now, he is a Catholic priest. He goes before the archbishop and gets a permission to do another exorcism, but he's not going to do this alone. He goes with two other priests, Walter, Walter Halloran and William Van Roo. Now, the three of them are going together to do another exorcism. Now, during this, they witness certain things that are terrifying, like the words evil and hell that appear on the boy's skin. The bed is shaking. The mattress is moving. Eventually, Roland breaks Halloran's nose during the process. Now, it is going on and on. And then eventually, the boy sits up and he says, he's gone. And he, from what I've read, has led a normal life after that. So this event happened in about 1948 to 1949. It's a long time ago. We didn't have computers back then. So it's really hard to validate any of this. Uh, there are all kinds of reports that you can find by just Googling it or watching different YouTube videos. I can't, I can't say for sure all of this happened. I can say that maybe some of it happened. I don't know for sure. But what I can say, it is a very scary story. And it was scary enough that it inspired a author to write a book about the subject. Now that author's name is William Peter Blady. He writes the book, The Exorcist, back in 1971. It quickly becomes a bestseller, then turns movie. This movie was released in December 26, 1973. Now a lot of people say that this movie was cursed. And not just people watching the movie, but people who are actually in the movie would say that this is cursed. And the reason why they say that there were a lot of really bad, bad things that happened before, 
during, and after the filming of the show. Now, let's start with the fire. There was a fire that happened on set, and it was terrifying. There was a bird that flew in and landed on a circuit box. It then caught on fire, and it burned everything down except Reagan's room. Now, if you haven't seen the movie or you don't remember, Reagan is the little girl who portrays Roland Doe, the real person. But in the movie, she's the little girl that needs the exorcism. Now, there are two deaths related to this movie. Actors Jack McGowan and Vass Ilsky Malaros, both of them died in the movie on purpose, but shortly after the movie was released, they also died in real life. Shortly after filming began, actor Jason Miller, who played Father Damien Karras, his son was nearly killed in a motorcycle accident. Now, there were a lot of bad things that happened on a set, and I don't know in an average movie, are there other things that happen when you have that many people involved? You have the actors and then all the people behind the scenes. Are there accidents that happen, you know, within family and extended family that we just don't know about? That could be, I can't tell you, but I do know that a couple of the actors were injured during the filming of this movie, and some of their injuries are still with them today, and that would include the main actress, Linda Blair, and her mother, or the person who plays her mother, um, I believe her name was Ellen Burstyn, she um, also suffered a back injury, and I believe a lot of it had to do with um, them doing their own stunts, because they didn't have special effects like they do now. And so maybe some of the things that they used weren't as safe as we would like them to be. But um, Linda Blair suffered an injury from an apparatus they used in the bed as she was being forced up and back down. So it looks like she's moving very quickly in the bed. And there's also a scene where Linda Blair uh, throws her mother back and her mom falls to the ground screaming. And in the actual movie, when you see her response, that is the actual response because they filmed it and didn't realize at the time that she had actually injured her back during that time. I was able to find a video on YouTube and it was the making of The Exorcist. It was really well done. I I found it really interesting to see how they did some of the special effects because they did not have the computers as we do now to see how they were able to create some of the special effects and the makeup and all of that to make that movie so terrifying and to see how they did it was really interesting. What I did find out was there were three actresses that actually played the character of Reagan. Now, the reason why they brought in the two other actresses was because Reagan or Linda Blair, the actress herself, was really young at the time. She was only like 12 or 13. And there were a few scenes in there that were really inappropriate for a young girl. So they brought in these older actresses to play these parts. Now, one of them, she only did the voiceover and it was Mercedes McCambridge. Now she has her own story. She, let, let me go back. She was the only, only did the voiceover in a part of the parts where I think she's swearing. Now, um, she's an interesting lady. She's played a lot of really great roles, but she has her own tragic story. In 1987, her son kills his wife, their two daughters, and then himself. Now, I'm not saying it has anything to do with the curse of the Exorcist movie. However, I do find it interesting that they are connected. I, I, it's just tragic, however you look at it. But it, it appears that he was maybe a stock market broker type and had misused some money and then probably felt like he couldn't get out of it. And then he ends up killing his family over it. Um, his mom who had invested in with him in the company does eventually get her money back because it be they believe that they found no significant evidence that she had anything to do with it. However, it is just very sad that um, that actually happened and that she was connected to the movie. After doing the research on this and learning a little bit more about this story, I'm just curious how you guys feel about it. Do you feel like there a show could actually be cursed or a place? Could it be the subject that you're talking about could bring in that negative energy? I'm just curious on your feedback on that. And I do want to thank my client for bringing this story to my attention. Of course, I had heard about the exorcist. I just never heard of the curse of the exorcist. So I, would, I do want to thank you for bringing that to my attention. 
Now, if any of you guys know me personally, you know I love a good ghost story. You know I love ghost hunting. You know I love the spirit world. But I also know to protect myself, and I also know to not take this as a game. You need to protect yourself against negative energies and you know, evil and all of that good stuff. I, I'm just curious of our listeners, do any of you believe in this stuff? Have you ever experienced anything like this? Do you have a ghost in your house? I want to hear about it. I truly, trust me, I want to hear it. Today's episode was super short. I apologize, but I am flying solo this week. Melissa was super busy with work and I'm so proud of her to be this busy during a pandemic. It's just amazing. and I'm so proud. But I do want to mention next week, I am going to be talking about the Muffin Man. I am not sure what's up Melissa's sleep, but you know it's going to be good. I do want to mention one more thing. My daughter Ella was nominated for Student of the Year through the Leukemia Lymphoma Society. Now, it's just a nomination. It is actually a contest to see who can raise the most amount of money. Now, she personally had to build a team of people who are willing to go out and fundraise with her. There are eight teams total. Now, if all eight teams reach their goal, that means we collectively will have raised $500,000 towards cancer research, blood cancer research to be exact. Now, if you or anybody in your family have been affected by a blood cancer, we would love your support. If you have any questions regarding this fundraiser, please go ahead and email me at salonsluce at yahoo.com. I'm also going to put a link to the donation page on our website at salonsluce.com. We thank you for being here with us today, and we hope you have a great week. Thank you.